How's it going guys? My name is Robbie and welcome back to the channel. Um, today I thought I'd record a video talking about the reasons I decided to build and then move into a tiny house. Um, but before we go there, I want to first start off by saying that you could argue that this is a tiny house at all. Um, it's around 600 square feet. It's got an office, a laundry room. It even has a walk-in closet. Um, so depending on perspective, you know, 600 square feet could be a lot of space. It could be a very little amount of space. Um, but for me, I got into the habit of calling it a tiny house before I learned that technically tiny houses are only 400 square feet or less. Um, either way, I'm gonna continue to call it that because it's certainly tiny to me. So with that out of the way, let's get right into it. Um, the bottom line is really this. I am trying to remain as irresponsible as I can, responsibly. Let me explain. Um, and I've got to take it from the top to truly get my point across and even still I'm not sure if I'll be successful, but here's my attempt. I Just don't know what I want out of life yet. Now. I have a career that I love um, I uh, Have helped build a great business that uh, I'm still a part of and life has been pretty good But the problem is I can't imagine where I'm going to be when I'm 50 or 40 or sometimes You know even younger than that. I really just don't know where I want to go and it's hard to create a roadmap when you don't know what the destination is and so until I hash that out I don't want to get sucked into day-to-day -day trends you know that might lead to me buying things that won't make me happy and I certainly don't want to make any long-term financial commitments to anything that I also don't think will make me happy um, you know unless that commitment could potentially um, open more doors Later, you know, for example, I'm not going to go finance a brand new car, but I may invest further into assets like real estate. And this is so that when opportunity comes knocking, I'll be in a position to capitalize, but not only financially, um, because financial is only one piece of the puzzle, but by living this way for a while, I also hope to free up some of what I'm going to call brain capital or brain bandwidth. Um, you see, not only is um, living in this space that I've built uh, the most financially responsible thing that I could have accomplished in that moment in time. There's a lot more to living in a small space than just financials, but before we get into that, I want to break down the financial situation very quickly. I was able to buy a very rentable property in the heart of Bowling Green, Kentucky. I was able to remodel it and then rent it to college students. After that, I, I remodeled the second structure on that property, and that's the structure that we're sitting in now. I rent the main structure to college students, like I said, and I live in the secondary structure. I actually get paid to live back here. Um, not only that, but by creating another living space, I've built more um, value in my property. And when I leave the property, I'll also be able to rent this space uh, or even Airbnb this space. And so who knows? Um, so I've future-proofed myself just a little bit there. Okay, so with that out of the way, it's important to further recognize um, that the simplicity of the living situation that I created. Uh, I've got a really small space and that means that I can't just bring into the space whatever I want. Um, I just don't have room for it and because of that, it's hard to acquire more stuff and that supports my goals of not buying things on a whim and keeps my space clutter free, which helps with the brain capital issue. With the small space also comes uh, the ability to quickly clean it. Um, moving into a new space also created the opportunity for me to be very conscious about the things that I brought into it from the start. I cut all of my things down to my essentials and then only bought things that I needed. So for instance, I bought um, four bowls, four plates, um, I've got a limited amount of forks and spoons, um, I've got four, oh, I'm sorry, five glasses, um, and these are just a few examples of the conscious decisions I made. Um, I have enough of these things or these items, for example, uh, to easily support two people, and also with, um, for instance, dishes, I don't have to spend a lot of time washing dishes because there's never a lot of dishes to wash. Um, these habits and decisions I've made uh, have opened up brain bandwidth. Um, and don't get me wrong, because I've recently taken on some huge projects um, and responsibilities, but the thing is, is I chose to take on those projects because I wanted to. With financial and available brain capital, um, I'll not only be able to afford to take on projects that I want to, but enough bandwidth available to see them through completely and to do them the justice that they deserve. And so, by being responsible up front, I'm going to be able to remain irresponsible and I'm going to remain as irresponsible 
as I can so that when opportunity rears its face, I'll be able to capitalize. I won't have um, financial hurdles to overcome or um, no time or not enough brain capital to, um, to, to at least consider these interesting projects. That pretty much sums it up. Um, and I want to close out this rant by saying that I understand that living in 600 square feet is just unreasonable for a lot of people. And I also recognize that compared to some people, I'm very lucky to be in the position that I'm in. But either way, I just wanted to make this video and explain to someone who's curious why one might want to live in such a small space. Or maybe I was just trying to justify it for myself. Um, so either way, I'm going to leave it there. I hope if you followed this video this far, uh, you got something out of it. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.